found among them. Rodents like mice and rats are also found here. The roots of trees growing on the land also help weathering of rocks. The process of soil formation is slow and continuous. It takes about a thousand years for a 2.5 centimeter thick layer of mature soil to form. Soil can get destroyed in a short period due to floods, storms and human activities such as mining. That is why it is necessary to conserve soil and to prevent erosion. The best remedy for to increase the green cover of the land. Erosion of land is reduced if grass, trees and bushes are grown in it. Try this. Obtain specimens of soil from various places in your surroundings such as your own yard, a garden, hills, river banks, fields and rocky ground. Note the differences in the specimens with respect to color, feel, texture and the size of the particles. Do you know? Humus is the layer formed on soil due to the decomposition of dead plants and animals by microbes. Humus supplies nutrients to the soil. Humus is also important for aerating the soil and for holding water in the soil. The proportion of humus in the upper layer of good fertile soil is about 33% to 50%. Use your brain power. What are the constituents of soil? Classify them as biotic and abiotic constituents. Answer. The particles of soil, sand, rocks and stones, etc. are the abiotic constituents of soil. The biotic constituents are microbes, bacteria, unicellular protozoans, fungi, algae, small insects like ants and termites, worms, centipedes and millipedes, earthworms, etc. Forests on land got buried underground due to the great upheavals that took place on the earth many ages ago. After that, the process of formation of fossil fuels from the remains of living things took place underground. We get fuels like petrol, diesel, kerosene, paraffin, and other useful materials like tar and wax from the fossil fuel called crude oil. Living things use land, water and air available on earth and so does man. However, the portions of these resources that are actually put to use are very small as compared to the whole earth. Look at the following table. Land 29% Potable water or fresh water 0.3% Oxygen 21% Even in these small proportions, the resources shown in the above table are sufficient for all living things. Only it is very necessary for man to control his greed. In other words, he must use these resources judiciously with the awareness that they are meant for all other living things and not just for mankind. Institutes at Work India Meteorological Department, that is IMD, was established in 1875 for studying the weather in the Indian subcontinent. The main function of this institute is to observe the weather and to make weather forecasts. This institute also conducts research related to changes in weather, makes forecasts about rains and studies the developments related to global warming. What we have learned The elements available in nature which fulfill the basic needs of living things are called natural resources. Air, water and land are important natural resources. Soil has both biotic and abiotic constituents. 
there are many constituents of air such as nitrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide, inert gases, water vapor, and dust particles. The ozone layer is a protective shell of the earth. Natural resources should be used carefully and sparingly.